The procedure demonstrated in this video is tracheotomy in the canine and tracheostomy tube placement. Tracheotomy is indicated to treat life-threatening upper airway obstruction or in anticipation of airway obstruction developing. Airway occlusion caused by trauma, neoplasia, or functional abnormality, such as laryngeal paralysis, are potential indications for tracheotomy tube placement. Tracheotomy and tracheotomy tube placement may also permit delivery of inhalant anesthesia without the need for oral endotracheal intubation in cases where surgery of the upper airway or oral cavity is necessary. Finally, tracheotomy is used in those cases where prolonged ventilatory support is necessary. When indicated, tracheotomy can be life-saving. However, with insertion of a tracheostomy tube comes the need for 24-hour intensive care of the tube to prevent obstruction with mucus and or blood. In an emergency situation, an endotracheal tube can suffice to produce a patent airway when placed through a tracheotomy incision. However, the use of tubes designed for tracheotomy placement, such as the Shiley endotracheal tube, facilitates care and cleaning of the tube. The Shiley tubes in medium to larger sizes have an inner cannula that can be removed and cleaned easily and reinserted without causing respiratory distress. In those tracheotomy tubes without an inner cannula, such as the one demonstrated here, tracheotomy tube care must come from frequent suction, suctioning and installation of saline through the tube. The dog has been placed in dorsal recumbency. The larynx is indicated and the manubrium of the sternum indicated here. The dog is in dorsal recumbency and this is the ventral cervical midline shown in this area. In a true emergency, characterized by life-threatening hy hypoxemia, aseptic preparation of the ventral neck may not be possible. If not an emergency, or if you can gain control of the airway by standard intubation, this may allow clipping and aseptic preparation of the neck. In either case, a skin incision is made on the ventral midline of the cervical area. Subcutaneous tissue is sharply incised and the goal is to stay midline to the trachea. In an emergency, sharp incision through the sternohyoid muscles may be accomplished without fear of damage to any major structure. In this demonstration, a more controlled incision on the midline is being attempted. The sternohyoid muscles are shown in this area by the tips of the Metzenbaum scissors. Division of the sternohyoid muscles on the midline between the two bellies of the sternohyoid muscle will bring you to the ventral midline of the trachea.
In this view, the larynx is being pointed out and the manubrium. The skin has been incised on the ventral midline and the subcutaneous tissue sharply incised. The sternohyoid muscle bellies are shown in this view and have been divided on the midline. Gelpy self-retaining retractors are placed to increase visualization of the trachea. The ventral trachea is exposed in this view. The tracheotomy incision is made between or in the area of the fourth through sixth tracheal ring. If the incision is made too far cranially adjacent to the larynx, increased coughing might be expected from the tracheostomy tube. If the tracheostomy tube is placed too far toward the thoracic inlet, care of the tube becomes more problematic. Two different incisions are acceptable for tracheotomy. A longitudinal incision can be made through three adjacent tracheal rings, or a transverse incision can be made through the annular ligament between adjacent tracheal rings. Either incision is acceptable. A suture is being placed around a tracheal ring in this sequence and will be left long and tied and will be accessible through the incision higher. This suture will allow us to open the trachea as we make our tracheal incision. And also, in the postoperative period, is a safety suture, which allows quick access to the trachea should the tracheostomy tube become displaced and replacement of the tube necessary. Incision of the annular ligament is being made. The transverse incision should not extend beyond 60% of the circumference of the trachea. The tracheostomy incision has been made and placement of the tracheostomy tube is being attempted in this sequence. The tracheostomy tube is now in place. The cuff that is attached to the tracheostomy tube is not inflated under normal circumstances. When the tracheostomy tube as you, is used as an airway adjunct, the cuff of the tracheostomy tube is inflated only if anesthesia is being administered through the tube or if the animal is being placed on a ventilator. The gelpy forceps are being removed and the previously placed safety suture will be tied. Scissors. 
The tracheostomy tube has been placed and will be secured using umbilical tape placed through the tracheostomy tube and going around the patient's neck. Additional safety sutures can be placed from the skin into the cuff of this area of the tracheostomy tube. Closure of the surgical wound is by loose apposition of the sternohyoid muscle bellies. There's a natural tendency to want to close the sternohyoid muscles in a tighter apposition around the tracheostomy tube. This can be a mistake in that when the tracheostomy tube is removed, if the muscles have been sutured, if the muscles have been sutured too tightly, subcutaneous emphysema can result because the muscles have been opposed in too tight a fashion rather than loosely and the air pass from the wound itself. The sternohyoid muscle bellies have been opposed with 3O absorbable suture. Notice that they have not been opposed directly around the, in, the tracheostomy tube or the tracheostomy tube placement. Again, cranially, notice the room around the tracheostomy tube, which is desirable when the tube is removed from the dog. At this point, routine closure of the skin can be performed. In this video, we will use surgical staples. Similarly to the sternohyoid muscles, the natural tendency is to want to close the skin as tightly as possible around the tracheostomy tube. This tendency is avoided. Next, the tracheostomy tube will be secured to the patient by placing umbilical tape and tying to the neck of the tracheostomy tube apparatus on each side. That umbilical tape is taken around the dog's neck and tied. Additional sutures can be placed between the skin and the cuff of the tracheostomy tube to add security to the tracheostomy tube and holding it in place. Several sutures can be used on each side as the surgeon prefers to further secure, secure the tube.
Notice the safety suture now that is protruding from the incision. Once again, this suture permits quick access to the trachea by pulling up on the trachea and exposure of the tracheotomy incision should the tracheostomy tube become displaced. Umbilical tape has been placed in the neck area of the tracheostomy tube and has been carried around the dorsum of the dog's neck and tied in place. The umbilical tape along with sutures helps to secure the tracheostomy tube in place. The tube is removed within 24 to 48 hours in most cases in hopes that the inciting disease process has been treated adequately and the tube can be safely removed. The tube is removed after cutting sutures and umbilical tape and removed and the wound allowed to heal by second intention. Normal wound care measures keeping the wound clean, use of Vaseline around the skin area to prevent chafing of the skin is necessary. Once the tube has been removed and we're satisfied that the animal can ventilate normally, the safety suture can be cut and removed in its entirety.